Hey everybody, my name is Brandon. Welcome back to Cinefessions, where we talk all things media. Today I want to do the second half of a video series that I started, man, I don't know, weeks ago, now maybe even a month ago, where I share with you guys the portion of my collection that I've decided to move out of their binders and into their actual DVD case and put it into my collection proper. Most importantly, adding them to my collection app. So that's what we're gonna go over today. There's about 19 boxes here, but that represents over 80 movies because these are all the multi-feature packs. The previous video was all the single releases. Today, we're going over all the multi-feature releases. So tons of stuff to get through, so let's get to it. Let's dive right in, guys, to my, I don't even remember what I called this one, basically a collection tour of some items moving from my binder to my proper collection. So I actually have these stacked from the lowest number of movies in the collection down to the most. So the first few here are double features. And this first one is really cool. I remember buying this one at, I wanna say Barnes and Noble, maybe a decade ago, like it was a long time ago, but this is a horror double feature of The Curse of Frankenstein and Taste the Blood of Dracula. So I've not watched either of these yet, which frankly, a lot of these I'll be able to say that for. They go in the binder and they're just out of sight, out of mind. That's just the way it is. But yeah, I, I really want to get to these at some point. I've heard great things about them. I know, I don't know if both of these are Hammer films. At least one of them is. Uh, the Curse of Frankenstein, I believe, is Hammer. So yeah, I don't know. Heard great things. Cannot wait to eventually get around to these. So this is a horror double feature with Taste the Blood of Dracula and The Curse of Frankenstein. Frankenstein. I have seen both of these next two here because they're both Goosebumps movies. So we have How I Got My Shrunken Head and Night of the Living Dummy, one of my all-time favorite Goosebumps stories. I actually read through, I did like a summer of Slappy uh, a couple summers ago now and read through a bunch of different Slappy books and I just, I love that series. So yeah, of course I love both of these and very happy to move these into my proper, my collection proper as I like to call it. But yeah, this actually, the, the Night of the Living Dummy, you can see here it, it has, says uh, Night of the Living Dummy 2 and Bride of the Living Dummy. And then How I Got My Shrunken Head. Not my favorite story of Goosebumps, but still a pretty well done uh, movie here. So yeah, very cool to add this to the collection. This is Goosebumps, How I Got My Shrunken Head and Night of the Living Dummy. I know I'm gonna mess up and say adding to my collection. These have been in my collection, just not in my app and in a binder. So excuse me, I'm used to doing haul videos. But anyway, next up here we have a, I don't know if these are, yeah, they are full moon. Okay, a full moon double feature of The Ginger Dead Man and The Ginger Dead Man 2, The Passion of the Crust. Now, fun story, I actually went to undergrad. I was a freshman when he was a senior with the lead character in Ginger Dead Man 2, Passion of the Crust. Not good friends with him or anything, but I wasn't a show with him. And so it was really cool to see that he was in this one here. But yeah, I, I don't know much about these. They're gonna be ridiculous. I think these are actually all available on Tubi as well, along with the Evil Bong movies. And the reason I bring that up is because eventually they have like a crossover, uh, one or two, maybe even three movies as a crossover between Ginger Dead Man and Evil Bong. So definitely would love to watch through these at some point. They're going to be awful. And that's, that's what I'm signing up for with this double feature. So Ginger Dead Man 1 and 2. This next one I also remember buying from Walmart, again, probably about 10 years ago. This is a true crime triple feature. I think this is Echo Bridge. Yeah, Echo Bridge Home Entertainment, which you'll probably see quite a few of in this pile today. But we have The Six Degrees of Helter Skelter, so of course about Charles Manson. The Ted Bundy story, guess who that's about? And then The Boneyard. That's one I don't see. Oh, it's Charles Ng and Leonard Lake. Okay, yeah, so definitely need to watch these at some point, of course. It's been a long time now since they've been in the collection, but haven't gotten around to them. This is one that you can see here. It's a double-sided disc. So two movies on one and then the third on the back side there. So not the best, but hey, it's Echo Bridge. What do you expect? So yeah, a true crime triple feature. This is a really cool one because I love a couple of these movies on here and I'm sure the third one's great. I just haven't watched it, but this is a Tom Hanks triple feature. We have The Money Pit, 
The Burbs, and Dragnet. Dragnet is the one I've not seen. The Money Pit, I remember watching. My parents were watching it a long time ago, and I, I was watching most of it. I don't know that I've watched it from start to finish, but I've seen the vast majority of it, and it was really funny. And then the one I absolutely adore is The Burbs. Just a absolutely hilarious movie. One of my wife's favorites. This is one, I need to get that one on Blu-ray. I, I might already have it, I don't remember. But yeah, I definitely got to get that one on Blu-ray if I don't have it because it's just a favorite of mine and I know there is a Shout Select Blu-ray available. But yeah, anyway, great films on here. Cannot wait to, or see, I'm just, again, I'm used to doing haul videos. I'm happy to have this in the collection. I should have put this one next to The Ginger Dead Man because we have some more Full Moon here from Echo Bridge. This is Demonic Toys, Doll Man, and then of course the crossover, Doll Man versus Demonic Toys. So I, again, I don't really know anything about these. It's Full Moon. You, you know what you're going to get, right? They're the ones who did Puppet Master, which you might see a little bit later on here. But yeah, I don't know. It, it's fun. It's bad movies, I'm sure, but I'm sure they're going to be a lot of fun. So Demonic Toys, Doll Man, and Doll Man versus Demonic Toys. And then to go along with that, another full moon picture here. A little bit different though. This one is not like animated puppets, basically. This is the subspecies trilogy. I think there are more than what's here, but I have the first three on DVD anyway. So we have subspecies and then Bloodstone, subspecies two, and Bloodlust, subspecies three. So not too much to say about these. Don't know a whole lot about them. Haven't really heard too much about the, the subspecies series, but I feel like I've said that word enough, so I will move on. This is, looks like a really fun triple feature to eventually dive into. Here's another one with some really good movies on it, and this is four film favorites, King of Horror. Guess who they're all related to? We have Dreamcatcher, Dolores Claiborne, Cat's Eye, and Creepshow. So I have seen half of this, I believe. Uh, Dreamcatcher is... Uh, a good movie, I guess I'll say. I don't love that one, but I think it is pretty interesting. And then Dolores Claiborne is great. Always like to do a double feature with Dolores Claiborne and Misery. I've always mixed those two up over the years because Kathy Bates is the lead in both of them. And they always felt sort of somewhat similar to me. I don't know. But yeah, uh, yeah the Creep Show, that's one I own on 4K now, and I still haven't gotten around to watching it. I definitely need to do that. And then Cat's Eye, I honestly, I don't re recall if I've seen that one or not. I may have. I know Drew Barrymore is in it. You can see a very young Drew Barrymore there. But yeah, so four King movies, Cat's Eye, Dreamcatcher, Dolores Claiborne, and Creepshow. Here is another four pack for you. This is Soul Survivors, Jacob's Ladder, Bug, and The Eye. Now, I do own The Eye on Blu-ray already with Jessica Elba. That is an uh, Asian horror remake, a J-horror remake. I don't love it. I like the original better, but it is what it is. It's fine. It's inoffensive, I guess. Uh, Jacob's Ladder, I've not seen. And Soul Survivors, I have not seen. Bug is excellent as well. That's actually a play that was then made into a movie. And the play's amazing. Like, I really want to see it done live. But uh, what's his name is in this? Uh, Michael Shannon is in this. And he is... It is just like a... It's a thriller... It's, I can't even explain. It is, it is such a weird film, but the paranoia of the film works so well. So definitely recommend that one, but I, I need to revisit it. It has been a long time since I've seen the film, but I, I love the play. So I definitely want to revisit that. But we have Jacob's Ladder, Soul Survivors, Bug, and The Eye. I used to love finding these ones out at Walmart because they are part of the After Dark Horror Fest. So we have four of them here. Lake Dead, Unrest, Crazy Eights, and Wicked Little Things. Now, I don't think I've actually seen any of these four, but Wicked Little Things. I started that movie many, many years ago, and I was really liking it. I got maybe half an hour into it or so, and we ended up having to leave, and I've never gone back to it yet, which is ridiculous because I always think about that movie and how I just, I need to finish it. Like, I need to rewatch that one from start to finish because it's one of those that has always stuck with me. And I just haven't finished it, so I definitely need to do that soon here. But yeah, happy this is in the collection, and I always love having After Dark Horror Fest movies in here. So we have Lake Dead, Unrest, Crazy Eights, and Wicked Little Things. This next one looks so super cheesy, but I am so for it. We have a Snake Attack 4 film pack with Python and Python 2, Boa with Dean Kane in that one, which is awesome. And then Venomous. And that one has Treat Williams in it. So 
I like these are this is just so much fun. I, I've not watched these yet, but I love stupid like animal attack movies like this. So I'm sure these are going to be a blast when I do get around to it. If you guys have seen any of these, let me know if any of them are worthwhile. Um, I would always lean to like the one with the, the sequel. So Python and Python 2. But let me know. Maybe Dean Kane. I need to give him a watch in Boa. We will see. So a, a four pack snake attack set with Boa. Python, Python 2, and Venomous. I've only seen one of this four pack, but I've actually just pre-ordered it for a Blu-ray release that's coming out. We have Disturbing Behavior, Lady in White, Wicker Park, and Stigmata. Stigmata is the one I've seen from here, and it is awesome. Now, mind you, I've not seen it since high school. My buddy and I watched it together, and we loved it. But it is coming to Blu-ray. I did I pre I, I'm fairly in my head. I remember pre-ordering it, but sometimes I think I pre-order something and I actually didn't. But I think that was one I ended up pre-ordering because it's not a very bad price either. Uh, but yeah, definitely excited to get that one on Blu-ray because I've been wanting it for a while. I think the I think it came out from Scream Factory and it went out of print. But correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments. But yeah, Wicker Park is another one I've always seen over the years with Josh Hartnett that I've wanted to watch. I just haven't yet, so I definitely need to do that. And then I don't know too much about Lady in White at all. Disturbing Behavior is always familiar, but I've not seen it. I know James Marsden is in that one. But yeah, got to check these out at some point down, down the line here. Stigmata, though, definitely recommend. So Stigmata, Wicker Park, Disturbing Behavior, and Lady in White. This one here actually may have been a Dollar Tree find. So you might have seen this on the channel if you've been watching for, I don't know, three or four years now. But it is an Epic Disasters 4-pack. So we have The Black Hole, Absolute Zero, Disaster Zone, Volcano in New York, and Category 7, The End of the World. That one actually has Shannon Doherty in it. Disaster Zone has the Costas Mandalore, which is fantastic. And then Judd Nelson and Christy Swanson are in the black hole. These are probably going to be absolutely god-awful, and I cannot wait to visit this collection. I would love to do like a whole iWatch vlog on these, you know, something like this. Any one of these collections, but just watch the whole thing and, and talk through them and see if it's worth it at all. Again, super low expectations, but sometimes that's the best way to go into it. So a four-film epic disaster collector set. Here is the first repeat of a movie I've shown already, but we have another four-film set, The Thriller Collection. Queen of the Damned, Dreamcatcher, which I already talked about a little bit, and uh, Gothica and Ghost Ship. So Ghost Ship has one of the greatest openings in a horror movie. And then it kind of just gets mediocre from there. Gothica, I think, is really good, but I don't, I don't know, I didn't love that one on a repeat viewing. I thought it was really well done the first time I saw it. And then it was kind of uh, diminishing returns after that. But I still recommend it if you haven't seen it. Again, Dreamcatcher, not great, but I think it's decent enough. Queen of the Damned, though, I have not yet seen, so I definitely have to check that one out with uh, Aaliyah in that. So I've heard really good things about that, so I definitely need to watch it. But a really cool set here for, you know, a four-pack. Queen of the Damned, Gothica, Ghost Ship, and Dreamcatcher. All right, so let's double it up now with these old eight packs that you could get at uh, Walmart back in the day for about five bucks, because why wouldn't I buy these, right? This is Midnight Horror. So there are eight movies on this one. The Reflecting Skin, Office Killer, Frozen in Fear, Strange Girls, Pinprick, Invisible, Brothel, and The Pit and the Pendulum. So again, these are just going to be like the lowest of low budget. They are on two DVDs. So just so you know what's, what's in here. So you know they are going to be very low quality for even for DVD. But again, this cost me probably $5 back in like 2010 from Walmart. So I really can't complain too much. So a midnight horror collection with eight probably terrible horror films. This collection here is probably the coolest one out of the entire video. I love this. And at one point, I feel like this was super hard to find. So I was very happy that I still had it in my binder and I was able to move it back to its case. But it's another horror collection. But this one is cool because it has Bloody Murder and Bloody Murder 2 plus, which I what I believe is the third film in that trilogy, Junior. That's really the reason that I was super interested in this because it's a bunch of, it's a slasher series that I've always wanted to check out. Of course, I haven't yet, but I will eventually. And then we also have Severed Children of the Living Dead, which probably has terrible quality. Uh, creepy, creepy Crawlers, Deadly Species, and Carnivore. 
Deadly Species, I actually started watching this a little bit ago because I was checking out some of the, the, the disc quality, like the video quality on it. And that one looked like a very mid-2000s low-budget horror film. There was some nudity, which of course you're going to get in a film like that. And everything else was just kind of not very good, but I definitely want to watch that from start to finish at some point. But yeah, Bloody Murder was really the reason to get these those three films there. So again, at one point, this was kind of hard to find, but I think it's a pretty darn cool collection and probably... The, the, my favorite of today's video. Down to the last two, and this is also Echo Bridge Home Entertainment, and I guarantee I spent maybe $10 on this at Walmart back in like 2010, but we have the Prophecy and the Hellraiser collections. This is utterly absurd. So you can see 11 films on there. I'm not going to name all of them, but we have Hellraiser 3 all the way through Hellraiser Hellworld. So that would be 8, I believe, Hellraiser 8. And then there's the Prophecy 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, of course, you can get the uh, Prophecy 1, 2, and 3 on, I think it was a was it Blu-ray or 4K through Vinegar Syndrome? I guess I don't remember. Probably 4K, but uh, you can get that there. I've, I've not watched the uh, Hel Prophecy movies at all, so I never was interested in upgrading, but I have them all on DVD, and I will open this up so you can see kind of how this is. Lots of discs in here, though, so there is that, but... Yeah, again, you don't buy these for the quality. You simply buy them so you can watch the movie. And if you love it, well, then you can upgrade down the line. But again, this was super cheap back when Walmart was doing a bunch of these. So that's why I picked it up. You can't go wrong with 11 films for probably less than $10. So we have the Prophecy and Hellraiser collections. Last but not least is also Echo Bridge, but we're going to go back to Full Moon with the OG, at least what I always think of as the OG. We have the Puppet Master and Killjoy franchises on here. So this has Puppet Master 1 all the way through uh, Axis of Evil, which is probably number 9. Yeah, number 9 it looks like. And then we have Killjoy 1, 2, and 3 as well. So yeah, the Killjoy movies look genuinely creepy because it's clown. So I definitely want to check those out. Puppet Master, if you can believe it, I have never seen a Puppet Master film before, which is utterly ridiculous because I feel like they would be right up my alley. I definitely need to do an iWatch vlog on that. Maybe not the whole series, but at least start with the first three and then work from there. But yeah, so you have the whole Killjoy trilogy on one disc. And then you have everything else here. Oh, you know what? I totally forgot. So I obviously like some of the, the cases I had to mix and match in order to get the right number of discs again. So also included in here, let me take this out. I totally forgot about this. So that is 12 films through the Killjoy and Puppet Master movies. But then let me move that. But on top of that, I have the Carrie trilogy in here. Not trilogy, really, but the three movies of the Carrie franchise at the time. So you have the original, and then Carrie 2, The Rage, or The Rage, Carrie 2, and then the, what year was that one? The 2002 remake of Carrie, which I've not seen. I definitely need to. Uh, fittingly enough, I actually, the, what was it? Maybe 2012, 2013, the one with uh, Chloe Grace Moretz, she is playing Carrie in that one. I'm all over the place. I'm getting distracted. Uh, that is coming out on 4K from Scream Factory in the month of March. And I actually, sacrilege, I actually like the remake, that, that version of the remake, better than the original Carrie, which frankly, I am not the biggest fan of. So yeah, anyway, this one is just loaded because I kind of customized it a little bit. A, a little a little huxtamization, if I will. Shout out to Huck uh, over at his channel because he always does that and I, I love those. But anyway, huge set here. 15 movies ended up being in this one box, which is pretty awesome. So the Carrie franchise plus Puppet Master and Killjoy. And that is going to wrap up all of the movies that have gone from my binder over to my collection. All right, so those are all the multi-features that left the binder and ended up into my collection proper. I think I even had to go on eBay and buy some empty cases in order to fit these in because for whatever reason, I was dumb when I did this. This was probably five or six, maybe even seven years ago now. I ended up taking all of the inserts, like the, the cover art, out of the DVD case put that in a separate box, put all the cases in one box, and then put the discs in the, the binder. I have no idea why I did that because the plan was to keep all of those things. So I don't know why I took the cover art out. Genuinely not a clue. It made 
for such a pain to put everything back because obviously these are multi-features, they're gonna require a certain number of disc slots in the case in order to fit. So I think I bought a few off of eBay and or Amazon, wherever I got them from, in order to make these all work, but I'm glad they work now. And frankly, I mean, yeah, it's a big stack, but it doesn't take up that much space. I mean, it takes up a heck of a lot more than this, but I think it's worth it. Not only are they you know, on the shelf so I can see them, but they're also in my collection now as well, my collection app now as well, which I'll mention, I use CLZ Movies, love it. I've actually just got CLZ Games, I have CLZ Comics, and maybe even the music app. I use basically their entire lineup. I love their apps, and so definitely check those out. If you're interested, it's super cheap. It's like, I don't know, the gaming app is 15 bucks for a year. Movies might be closer to 30 for a year, but in my opinion, absolutely worth it. Not sponsored, by the way. But anyway, guys, that is it for the day. So let me know down in the comments below, what of this giant pile here would you like to see an iWatch, however many, vlog on? I would love to take any suggestions and recommendations down in the comments below. So thank you guys so much for leaving any and all thoughts down there. I really do appreciate it. But that's it, guys. So if you enjoyed this one, go ahead and hit that like button down below. That engagement really does help me out. But with that said, I just want to encourage you all before you go to consume some media today. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you all next time.